If there's one piece of advice that I'd give to a first time founder, it's be so intentional about who you're going to work with. It is like a marriage. It is probably more intense than a marriage. I have spent more time with my co-founders than I've ever spent any day with my wife. This is Elliot, the CEO and founder of General Collaboration. Within six months of joining the company, I was approached by the board and asked if I would take over the company as CEO. After working at Meta for more than five years and trying out multiple startups, Elliot has now started his new journey. I think in retrospect, I wish I had seen that earlier. I wish I had invested more in that earlier. Uh, that could have sped up the time to get to where we are now. Today, we're going to talk about his business, professional life, and entrepreneurship. This is Manish, and welcome back to the channel. All right, let's start. Thank you, Elliot, for joining us and thank you for accepting the invite. So introduce yourself to everyone, who you are and what do you do? Sure. Well, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, my name is Elliot Popple. I'm the founder of General Collaboration, which is a startup that's taking the comments in apps that people like us use at work. Google Docs and Figma and Notion and Linear and Jira and Airtable and Asana. We take the comments in those apps, we consolidate them, make it easier to triage those comments, to manage those comments. And more importantly, we start showing you things that you would never see otherwise. Uh, we show you, you know, when one of your teammates is blocked and needs help or what your manager is focused on that you might want to focus on too. So I'm an early stage startup founder and I'm grateful to be on and be your first guest. Sounds like a really good application. It has many uses for different types of users. I just looked into your profile and you have had multiple positions before. You have worked at Meta for almost like five years. So what made you to do the jump from being an employee to an entrepreneur? Started my career in venture capital, graduated school and did the associate track thing at a venture capital firm. So I joined my first startup then. Within six months of joining the company, I was approached by the board and asked if I would take over the company as CEO. When I'd call my first product management role, that's when it started to hit me of like, oh, this is this is something I really enjoy. I'm enjoying the product side of this, but I was also enjoying the, the leadership, the management, the all the complicated bits of being a of a, being a founder. And after that, one of the engineers that I'd really hit it off with in that process founded our first company together. So that's my first time being like the, a true co-founder of zero to one. And it, we found it at an on-demand pharmacy. We delivered sort of prescription drugs that you'd get at a CVS or a Walgreens on demand. That company did not do as well. Uh, we shut it down after about two years. We didn't run out of money. We were doing this apology tour, giving money back to some of our investors. And one of our investors had actually left his partnership. He had this incredible opportunity to join that uh, super, super senior leadership at Facebook. Um, so that's what I did. I joined as a product manager at Facebook. It was five years at, at Facebook. I never thought I'd stay that long. After five years, I said, all right, this, this idea is worth quitting my job over and here we are working on general collaboration. Since you've already told me that you've already been an entrepreneur and then you move into an employee and then you're now back to being a founder, you should already know the basics of starting up your own stuff. No matter what it is, it's the idea that actually matters. So for general collaboration, how did you actually get the idea? My first startup, the classic example of we were technology in search of a problem. The second startup, we learned a little bit, but not too much. And that time we focused on a problem, but we focused on our problem and we didn't really pay attention to anybody else's problem. We were in San Francisco. We were trying to be this family pharmacy. We kept getting a ton of prescriptions for birth control, this drug called finasteride, erectile dysfunction drugs. We were getting pulled by the market into this opportunity to create something like Hims or Roman. We were so ignorant of the demand of the market that we focused too much on, on what we wanted. Classic startup mistake of how not to start a startup. What do people want? What is the actual problem here? Putting the problem so much further ahead than, than getting married to a solution. I spent almost a full year before actually like writing any code or building any product in the traditional sense. As I became more confident in different parts of my idea, working up different prototypes and mock-ups to get in front of people. I was able to found this company feeling so confident that this problem is real, that this problem needs to be solved. There is a demand for a solution in this space. Now the hard part is figuring out that solution and building it, but I have absolutely full confidence that this is something that the market wants. That's where I think great ideas come from and start with users, start with the problem, start with why they want you. So since you have started the company and now it's in the early stage, you've just launched it. How is the company growing and how far from the time you've started till right now, how the company has grown in terms of revenue and also in terms of the team? So we're a little over two years alone, uh, that we actually only launched the product publicly earlier this month. We spent over two years in various states of alpha and beta. So we thought about things in terms of a minimum triable product and then a minimum lovable product. Five versions, like five large versions and a lot of small versions in between of general collaboration that we built before we got confident enough to say, okay, it's time to build a minimum lovable product. 
and a lovable product is one you need to be able to use day in, day out. These integrations need to be able to work on a daily basis. I need to be getting my comments in real time. Early traction has been great. We did a product hunt launch. We thought that made a lot of sense for our product. We wound up getting product of the day. Uh, we got product of the week. Number two, productivity app of the month. Uh, I think number five overall. So a great initial result, drove a lot of early traction, uh, early traffic to the website. What is going phenomenally well right now is we have across our daily active users and our weekly active users, 85% of users who reach our activation milestone are retaining on a weekly basis. 40% of users who reach our activation milestone are retaining on a daily basis. Me and the team are like, holy shit, that's, that's a great sign of early product market fit. What I'm a little worried about is at the top of the funnel, it's kind of a tall order that we have for our users. We are a Mac OS app. You have to download our app for Mac OS. You have to install it. There's some scary permissions that pop up to that point of signing into all your work apps and having to work with all your work apps. The drop off of people that seem interested in the solution and people said, oh, I'm interested in this, but oh, this is a little, am I comfortable doing this yet? The drop off from that to a point where people are in the product has been pretty significant. So for me, for me and the team, we're now looking and saying, okay, how can we make people more comfortable? It's clear now where we need to spend our time next to make this a product that, that more people want to use. So you've been in this for two years now and all these days you should have faced so many challenges and my question is what is that big challenge that you faced when you started this and what is the challenge that you're facing right now so that we only had the public launch last month we probably maxed out around 150 active users at like on any of those individual betas that we were in before this launch figuring out the nuance of how to build that user experience is where we've spent the most time uh, there was an earlier version of this application that was a chrome extension Chrome extension isn't quite right. There were a bunch of issues with it. This was going to be a very nuanced product to build. Design was going to matter. User experience was going to matter. I'm building a venture back to business. I'm going to be quitting my job at Facebook to come and found this. Uh, I was not approaching this as wanting to build some sort of lifestyle business. Venture capital is an incredible tool to use to try to build that kind of that kind of company. I was fortunate that I was able to fundraise right when founding the company. Some traction milestones to show that this product has those early signs of product market fit and is worth someone investing in, uh, is worth us continuing to work on. So we've got the beginning of those numbers. Now it's gonna be a question of how soon can we get to those numbers and then can we raise sometime next year? Before moving on to the rest of the video, if you guys like this content and this type of content, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get more videos like this and you get notified every time I post another video. And also it helps me to grow the channel. I've been doing it for a long time right now. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you. So let's get back to the video. So going more towards the personal side, as a founder, as a startup founder, and as a CEO of a tech startup, How's your regular day like? What do you do and how busy it is? It's busy. I've got a four and a half month old baby boy here at home. Being a startup founder this time around is a little different than it was uh, first or second startup. For me, what a typical day looks like is for one, I, I live out of my notebook. Um, I used to be a lot more like digital uh, when it came to, to taking notes. And for me, what's been so helpful is every day writing down, what do I need to do? What's immediately on my plate? And I always want this fresh, clean slate of what needs to be focused on and what is a priority right now. If there are unchecked items on this list after one or two days, then I don't have my priorities right. It's too many things on my list. The top of that list are the things that I'm gonna do. Bottom of that list are things that I'm delegating to my team that I need to make sure that they're doing. I have priorities outside of work. My team has priorities outside of work. We need to make sure that we're doing the right things at work so that we can also be the people that we wanna be outside of work. Yeah, having a checklist definitely helps, especially if you're a freelancer and you're being self-employed and you just have your own time to do your things. I think it's better to make a checklist and finish the things on that day. I have started doing that myself and it does help a lot. Again, coming back to the transition from being an employee to an entrepreneur, how do you see on the personal growth side, you should have learned so much of stuff in these two years and how do you see that you have grown yourself or how is the personal growth for yourself? The biggest difference between being at a company like Facebook and being a startup founder, the resources that are available to you and the hats that you wear. I learned so much, both in terms of best practices, in terms of how do they prioritize, um, what are the different tools that are in their tool belt that they're going to offer to the team. That's the learning that I took most to this startup is now recognizing what are those best practices? What, what things did I see those experts do that I can apply to my startup? What are the things that I know an expert can do so much significantly better than me that I need to bring in someone, whether that's a full-time employee, or maybe it's a part-time fractional teammate, or maybe it's just a limited project-based contract. But knowing when, knowing when it's time to tap in 
and uh, get someone to help rather than trying to just muscle through and do it yourself. Leaning on those experts, learning from those experts, knowing when to get help from an expert is probably one of the biggest learnings. Yeah, micromanaging and trying to do everything by yourself. I think it's a very natural thing whenever people start doing something. I have done it myself too, but I think the best decision is to give it to a person who does it better than you and knowing that another person can do better than you and giving the work to them. I think that's a really good move. So just a fun question now. So if you could go back to that Elliot who was there two years back when he started there, if you can meet that Elliot today, what would you tell him? <laughs> I think the biggest unexpected thing was how technically complicated parts of this were going to be. And initially I thought it was going to be much simpler. I think in retrospect, I wish I had seen that earlier. I wish I had invested more in that earlier. Uh, that could have sped up the time to get to where we are now. There's little that I look back on and regret in the approach. I feel like there's there's a lot that I learned from those first two times around the block that made me avoid mistakes that I had made then and that I've been pretty great at avoiding now. So I'm grateful where we are. There's a, there's a few things that I would do differently right now. So being an entrepreneur and trying to do your own things is so popular right now and so many people are trying to do that. What is that one thing which you would tell anyone who's trying to start now? If there's one piece of advice that I'd give to a first time founder, it's be so intentional about who you're going to work with. Find a co-founder. It is like a marriage. It is probably more intense than a marriage. I have spent more time with my co-founders than I've ever spent any day with my wife. You need to be in such lockstep together and your ability to go fast and accomplish things is going to be rooted in your ability to be to be using your time as efficiently as possible and playing to each other's strengths. I think that's the, the most impactful way that you can be building a team together. It's going to set a great culture for your team. Uh, it's going to save you a lot of time, a lot of headaches. So being really intentional about who you're working with, how you're going to work together, do you trust them? What do you trust them with? Do they trust you? And what do they trust you with? And since you said so much about co-founders and how important it is to have a co-founder when you do a startup, uh, there's so many people who are starting out on their own and uh, they won't really know like whether to have a co-founder. How do they even find one? You know, maybe like two friends talking about a business and they start together. You know, it can happen that way too. But according to you, what would you say? If you are gonna go looking for a co-founder, I'd really recommend leaning on your own network before going to something like, you know, the Y Combinator co-founder dating thing, uh, because it's just, it's hard to build those relationships. And if you're gonna build a relationship, they take time. It, to me, would be the equivalent of, you know, going on Hinge and you find someone that seems really interesting, but getting married the next week. Like, no, you're gonna date for quite a while before you decide that you're gonna start, like really start this relationship. And you're probably gonna date a lot of people. So figure out how to date before you get married, if you're gonna try to, you know, swipe left, swipe right, your way to a co-founder. That was some really great information and everything was so useful and I did learn a lot and I hope everyone learns a lot from this video. I hope general collaboration reaches new heights and grows much bigger. Again, thank you so much for accepting the invite and being the first guest on the series. Thank you so much and have a good day. All right, guys, so I think that video was very useful for you. And the whole point of making this whole new series is uh, to talk more about entrepreneurship and how important it is and, you know, giving you more ideas about entrepreneurship, making a business, doing a business and all that. So I hope this uh, series is useful and and uh, there's more videos coming like this from more people all around the world. All I ask is just one thing. Uh, just make sure to subscribe to our channel and please support the content. I'll see you guys with another guest in another interview very soon. And uh, till then, it's Manish. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.